Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Prior to 60 years ago, summers in the United States were much hotter than they are now, but there's not very many people around now who remember. And every time someplace gets hot now, climate alarmists scream that it's unprecedented and it's caused by carbon dioxide. I don't care about their junk science, but I've always been interested in weather and climate. And one of my areas of interest has been past heat waves when carbon dioxide levels were much lower. In this video, I discuss the global heat wave of 1895 and 1896, along with a number of other topics. Here's an interesting article from 1901. The history of the world droughts goes back to the year 627, when in France and Germany, thousands of human beings died of thirst. In the year 1000, the rivers of Europe dried up, and heaps of fish were left to putrefy and spread the plague that followed. In 1123, the Rhine River dried up in Alsace. During the Battle of Bella in 1260, more men died from heat than wounds. In 1303 and 1304, the Rhine, Loire, and Seine rivers ran dry. In 1779, many persons in Bologna were stifled. Shops all over Europe were closed for months. In 1821, a plague of mice came with intolerable heat. More than 200,000 persons died from heat in France. If any of these things happened now, climate alarmists would of course blame it on elevated CO2 levels. Looking at the United States temperature record going back to 1895, so far this year the United States has had the smallest number of warm days on record. Only 56% of days so far this year have been above 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You won't hear this reported by CNN, the New York Times, or the BBC. Here in the Rocky Mountains, we had historic record cold and snow earlier in September. Now let's look at the number of hot days in the United States. This graph shows January 1st to September 15, percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. You can see that there's been a sharp downwards trend and that all recent years have been among the lowest on record. In 1936, 13% of days through September 15 were above 95 degrees, whereas in recent years it's been closer to 5%. But a person would have to be more than 90 years old to remember that. This next graph just shows September temperatures, and you can see that September was also much hotter prior to 60 years ago. The hottest September was 1931, when 83 degrees was the average maximum temperature around the United States. And this graph shows the September percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. There were a lot more 90 degree days during September in the United States prior to the year 1960 than there has been since 1960. And the same thing is true with 100 degree days. In 1925, 7% of September days were above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty incredible. This graph narrows it down to September 10th through September 22nd, which is essentially the end of summer. All of the five hottest years for that date range occurred prior to the year 1945, with 1895 being the third hottest. And for the September 10th through September 22nd, percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 1895 was the second hottest after 1931. Ohio experienced an incredible heat wave from September 17th through September 22nd, 1895, when 76% of the readings were above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And Hillsboro, Ohio had five consecutive days over 100 degrees, topping out at 105 degrees. Whether that hot in September now is inconceivable in Ohio. This graph shows the Ohio percent of September days above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The last time it happened was in 1953, but in 1895, more than 8% of days were over 100 degrees. And you can see that in 1894, 1895, and 1897, there were days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in Ohio. Imagine the hysteria from climate alarmists if we had this 19th century weather again. But the 1895 heat wave wasn't confined to Ohio. In fact, it covered much of the United States. On September 17, 1895, Forestburg, South Dakota reached an incredible 112 degrees. Temperatures in much of the Great Plains in the Midwest over the past week have been 30 to 50 degrees cooler than they were in 1895. And the heat wave wasn't just in September. Here's an article from early June about a fearful heat wave that's been baking Pittsburgh and causing a great deal of suffering. 
And here's an article from London from August 1895 discussing a great heat wave in Europe. A great heat wave has passed over Central Europe. Vienna was the center of the attack and during perfectly tropical weather when even the wind was hot and the nights were sultry. The streets were almost deserted till evening when the Viennese poured out into the public paths and gardens and were loath to go home in the small hours. The heat was almost as bad in Italy, while in Germany violent thunderstorms failed to lower the temperature. In many districts, the enormous hailstones damaged the harvest, and both men and cattle were killed by lightning. The storms carried away whole roofs of houses. Here's an article from Nebraska from September 17, 1895. The Beatrice schools reopened this morning for the fall and winter terms with a large attendance. The weather was almost indescribably hot, and teachers and scholars suffered alike. The conditions making it appear more like reviewing studies in midsummer. Here's another article from England dated September 28, 1895. Eastern Canada has been visited by an extraordinary heat wave. The temperature on Saturday was 90 degrees in the shade. By contrast, someone tweeted to me this morning that they're having frost warnings in Quebec. Now let's look at what was going on in Derbyshire, England on October 2, 1895. A terrible epidemic of crime appears to be spreading over the country. A number of shocking murders and suicides are reported, the most horrible of which occurred at the little hamlet of Dunhampton in Worcestershire. There is little reason to doubt that the heat wave which is now passing over us is largely responsible. So we've seen that the heat wave lasted from June through October, but it didn't end then. January of 1896 was the hottest month on record in Southeast Australia. This is what the New York Times reported later in 1896. Hottest of hot waves on record. How it struck sweltering New South Wales in January last. Talking about hot weather, one day last January the mercury at Adelaide, Australia marked 127 degrees in the shade. These were the temperatures in New South Wales on January 23, 1896. There were many temperatures over 110 degrees, and here's 122 degrees, 121 degrees, and 120 degrees. One place along the Darling River in New South Wales reported shade temperatures over 120 degrees 10 days in a row, topping out at 129 degrees. You might remember that a few days ago, climate alarmists were trying to claim that 130 degrees at Death Valley was the world's record. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology now hides all temperatures prior to 1910, and you can see from looking at this article why they're doing that. They're pretty inconvenient for the alarmist narrative. Here's an article from the Barrier Miner from January 23, 1896, reporting 125 degrees at Burke. Many people were sick and there was a cyclone. It was a bad time in Queensland as well. High records, numerous deaths, and blasted crops. 113 degrees in Queensland. And later in 1896, they were having a terrible heat wave in Europe. Deaths from sunstroke. A great heat wave is at present being experienced in Europe. In England, numerous deaths by sunstroke have occurred, including that of a sentry on duty at Marlborough House, the London residence of the Prince of Wales. In Spain, the heat has been so intense that the very birds have been killed. And on the other side of the pond, during the summer of 1896, a 10-day heat wave killed nearly 1,500 people in New York City. Carbon dioxide levels were very low in 1895 and 1896, and people who claim that heat waves are caused by carbon dioxide have no clue what they're talking about. I'm going to finish this up with one more graph showing fall northern hemisphere snow cover. Autumn snow cover has greatly increased over the last 50 years to record levels. This is because the freeze line has been moving further south. Arctic air now intrudes further south during autumn than it did 50 years ago. So autumn precipitation, which used to fall as rain in warmer temperatures, now falls as snow. Toto wishes that the climate science community had some actual interest in science and wanted to learn about these things and teach other people. But the fact that they don't gives Toto the opportunity to teach people himself. You can visit Toto and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.